Hello, my name's Robbie and this is my boat that I live on. Uh, we're about to go on the shortest canal in the world. Well, at least in England. Anyway, it's quite a busy road up there. So let's actually go and have a look at this canal. Right here is a junction that meets the, well, the Trent and Mersey keeps on going down that way. Uh, it's down south. And uh, through this bridge here, this is the shortest canal in, in country. And that's it, that's all it is from just over there <laughs> all the way up to the end of that lock. Mad, isn't it? I think it's about 45 metres according to the um, uh, Wikipedia page, but yeah. Not much mooring on this, you can't moor anywhere. Uh, no facilities, absolute disgrace. So uh, yeah, not much to see really, is there? But this is a great opportunity to have a real time journey, just you and me, um, on, on the shortest canal in the world. <laughs> it's not the world, I don't know, might be, could be. Before I start, I've got to give a massive shout out to two new Crankit crew members. Um, I've got Ian Dethridge. Ian, thank you very much. What a cool name as well. And um, Tim Gray. Tim, thanks for so much for supporting the vlog. You're helping me buy stuff like this, basically. This is a, well, a little magic camera arm that I can just clip onto whatever and uh, help me film my journeys, my voyage logs. So thanks. <laughs> I've only got one camera, uh, iPhone, iPhone 11 Pro that I'm using right now. And uh, yeah, it's quite difficult to undo the ropes whilst you're filming. So uh, hopefully I don't need two takes at this, but it's quite a short canal, isn't it? So it's no problem. Uh, right, now I've got to push the boat out with my foot. Obviously being very, very careful, health and safety and all that. Oh, just absolute shambles, isn't it, already? Right, let's get on board. That's the thing with these, these vlogs, with police or ambulance going past. Ambulance. You, you don't know whether or not it'll work until you actually try it. So here it goes. Experimental. That's me. Right, got a beep. Once we're going right, twice we're left. And I'm not going to make this angle, I know. So I'm just going to have to... Oh. Right, I'm going to need to have another go. <laughs> Bear with me. I'm going to try and slow right down here because that gate, I think, I've been told it always comes open anyway, so I mean it won't stay shut. So I'm just going to really very slowly nudge up against the, the gates. And that's what working boats would have done all the, you know, a lot of the time. They were just, no, no brakes or anything, it was just, it was just a bashed right into some of the gates, you know. Back in the horse-drawn days, but we're a little bit past that, aren't we now? There we go. 
more acceleration. I hate doing it, but it's got to be done when you're on your own sometimes. No one else is going to help me, so. My next move is to grab this rope and then try and get up onto a uh, onto some ladders. Looks like this, the nearest one is here. So, yeah. Let's not forget this. I always forget this when I always like climb up the um, whenever I climb up the ladder. I always forget. To take this with me. But once you get into the swing of things, you generally sort of remember. It gets to the end of the day, and then you're just like, ah. Oh. I haven't slowed the boat down to a stop, but it's done it itself because it's quite a narrow lock, as you can see. This is actually quite dangerous, but I've done worse. up now it's not a very deep lock so it didn't take much to get up there so there's not really anywhere to tie up apart from on the other side where it's hard to get to well do you know what I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get back on the boat and stick it into forward gear and just keep the nose pressed up against the gate So the boat's where it should be, and as the water fills at the lock, it'll lift the boat up and I can get back on it and, and turn the engine off as well. So I'm going to shut these gates. We're in Middlewich, by the way, and that's roughly in the centre of Cheshire, about 20 miles from Chester. And I'm headed this way, which this is where it links to beyond that lock is the next canal and that's uh, the Middlewich branch of the Shropshire Union so uh, yeah headed that way next right gates closed where's my windlass there it is should never leave it lying around but <laughs> I had to just there all right here we are paddles are all down on that one I hope you appreciate the real-time uh, aspect of this video. It's not completely real-time, but as much as I can. But it does involve me walking around with the camera and everyone's like looking at me thinking what a weirdo.
because I'm relying on the engine to keep the boat against the gate, um, obviously yeah, it does cause a few diesel fumes. Um, but it means I can not worry about ropes and keep the boat in the correct place and also be a little bit more generous, let's say, with the ground paddles. So yeah, I think I'm going to whack this one all the way up now. I think I'm happy now, I can just switch the engine off and let the power of the water that's filling up the lock um, do the rest of the work. I just want to get back on board whilst the engine's running. Oh, it's always a bit scary. There we go. Oh, I've put on my inverter switching thingy. There we are, now it's charged with batteries. Right, that's it. Just had a lovely chat with a, a local lady. Um, it reminds reminds me sort of of the the woman that it's called Maureen, and she used to live here. And this is the lock house, and um, yeah, it was her lock. She always used to look after it. I've never met her, but um, yeah, I imagine she might be a little bit like the locals around here. Everyone's really friendly. Um, so you got to watch out, they will talk to you <laughs> if you don't stop moving. <laughs> or if you're doing something weird like filming yourself. I'm being nosy now, what's that for? <laughs> Tie this up so I don't have to moor up again. Anything to save effort. <laughs> Such a lazy kit. <laughs> Alright, there we go. That's it, shortest canal in England, maybe the world. Done, that's it. Crank it onto the next des destination. There is actually a pub of the week. Should we go to the pub of the week? Yeah, let's do it. Just gonna moor up first. Well, I think this is probably a good mooring spot because I've just bumped into Fran and Rich from floating our boat. So, uh, waving his <laughs> What do you reckon? Let's go to the pub? Yeah, so we're going week? to the pub. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Fans of Fran and Rich's channel will notice, uh, recognise this boat more next to the Naughty Lass. This boat here belongs to Fran and Rich, and they go off on lots of adventures on their narrow boating channel. 
floating our boat. So check it out, guys. I'll put the link in the description. So across the road from the Wardle Canal and situated by Lock 71 of the Trent and Mersey, this pub seems ideal for boaters and gongoozlers alike. And with free doggy biscuits, there's a bit of a hit with Fran and Rich's canine companions. The bar here is actually modelled on an old flyboat. That's a working boat that never moored, had right of way at all times, and was just working round the clock. And there's loads in this pub that reminds you of its history in serving boat families. Um, for stabling or just entertainment. But the best thing about this pub isn't its convenient location or, or its beer, it's the fact that it's just got such a great atmosphere. Um, whether you want to have a quiet pint or, you know, really enjoy some good time with some friends or even play music, there's open mic nights, there's quiz nights, there's all sorts going on. So cheers. And that's it, pint's done. Time to go across the road for the excellent fish and chips and then back to my boat. Hopefully I'll see you again on the next vlog. Until then, keep on cranking it and take it easy. Bye. I keep forgetting my camera. <laughs> Come here.